people mm-hmm. aren't impressed, are not impressed with the addition of Jack Cohn. That's that's generally, again, what I get across the board. I watch him play a lot of football at Wisconsin. He is, is he Ian Book without the mobility to, to that extent? He had a 19 to 5 TD to pick ratio and leading Wisconsin to a Rose Bowl 70% completion percentage. And will there be a true quarterback battle in fall camp? Well, I'll go with the quarterback battle. Will there be a battle? Yeah, I think there will be because Drew Pine and Tyler Buckner are really talented young players, and I think that they've earned the right to at least be in com- the conversation to compete with Jack Cohn. Do I think there's going to be a battle in that they're so seriously going to challenge Jack Cohn for the starting job? No, I don't. I- I'm a lot higher on Jack Cohn than most people are. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, Mark. When I first heard that that Notre Dame was looking at Jack Cohn, I was a little bit like, really? Because I had the same thought you did. You know, I, I watched him in Wisconsin. It was kind of a dull offense. They didn't ask him to make a ton of plays. Just handed it off to Jonathan Taylor a lot. But then I dive into the All-22 film, and I'm seeing a kid that's thrown the ball with tre- in tremendous anticipation, tremendous ball placement, a kid that's got some guts. You know, he's going to fit the ball into some tight windows, something we haven't seen from Notre Dame's quarterback in several seasons, even before Ian Book. He's a guy that understands where the ball has to go. There's some parts of his game he has to clean up. I think sometimes in that attempt to make a play, he holds on to the ball too long, will get hit from the backside and, and lose the ball. I, I want to see that cleaned up. But this is a guy that, in my opinion, has an opportunity to take Notre Dame's pass game to a whole new level. And what a lot of people don't realize about Notre Dame's offense the last really two years, especially in 19 and 20, is you know I, there were so many opportunities for Notre Dame to be better and more effective and more explosive in the past game, but Ian Book was just not a guy that was comfortable going past read one and two. And he wasn't a guy that was comfortable really attacking teams down the field. When he did, the offense was pretty good. We saw that in the first half against Clemson last year. We saw that in the first half against Florida State last year. More often than not, he wasn't willing to do that. And, you know, I could go back to the Clemson game in 2018 when it's a nothing nothing ball game Chase Claypool beats a guy on a post or excuse me Miles Boykin beats a guy on a post route same throw that Ian Book made to win the game against Pitt and instead of climbing the pocket letting it go and maybe it's first and goal or maybe it's seven nothing he tries to tuck and run gets stripped fumbles Clemson picks it up goes down on that next series kicks field goal so I mean you're talking about a 10 point swing and a momentum swing and we saw that throughout his career just the unwillingness to take those shots and Jack Cohn is not unwilling to take those shots and he was an effective deep ball thrower. So I think he's going to be successful. I just have a hard time fathoming how he won. He went 10-2 and two in the regular season at Wisconsin against a relatively challenging schedule. Played Ohio State that year. Played a really good Minnesota team on the road that year. Played, well, I'm talking about regular season. But even, then you, you talk about three of the four losses were two to the number three team in the country in Ohio State. And then they lost by a point in the Rose Bowl to, to Oregon, who had that guy, you know, Justin Herbert, you know, pretty decent player. Yet he's going to come to Notre Dame where Wisconsin's the toughest team on their schedule and they're going to go eight and four or nine and three. I, I, I don't understand this. I think what's happening is there's still this view of Notre Dame that they are the Notre Dame of pre-2017. Brian Kelly has shown that they can reload. You know, we, we talk about the offensive line and so oh, the, how are they going to do offensive line? Well, the year after they lost Quentin Nelson, Mike McGlinchey, and then Alex Bars gets hurt in the fifth game of the year, Notre Dame went 12 and 0. Right. I mean, so we've seen them do this before. They lost uh, two starting defensive ends to the NFL draft. They lost Jerry Tillery after 2018. And yet this past year, the defensive line went out and just reloaded with two new starters at end that then went and got drafted. Notre Dame has recruited and developed to the point now where I believe they're in reload mode. A lot of people don't think that. I also think that a lot of people think Ian Book had a lot more to do with their success than I think Ian Book had to do with their success. And, um, And I don't think people are talking enough about Marcus Freeman and the impact I think he's going to make as the defensive coordinator. I think that's another thing. There's just a lot of things that I think people are going to realize, oh, we probably should have paid more attention to that instead of just assuming that Notre Dame was going to go back to what they were before before 2017. 